I'm not going to go right into how to program them and how to set them up and um, Keith's been developing some extra add-ons for the DMX effects to allow you to, to do some clever stuff. I just basically wanted to give you a look at what they are, what they do, whether you think you want to go out and spend some money and buy some, maybe use it somewhere in your display and then once you've got one you can then play with it and set it up and get a concept of how they work. I've got two here, the um, one on this side if you can see it is a wash, it's got seven RGBW LEDs in it and they're 30 watts or 10 watts, about 70 watts in total, so 10 watts each. And the other fella is a uh, one that Heath owns, a little spotlight and it's got a set of gobos and some moving filters in it I believe and we're going to try and get them going. I haven't got it going yet so it's a bit of a walk in the park at this stage. Um, how I'm controlling them for this demonstration, I'm using an Entec USB DMX Pro adapter box. So I'm just coming out of the PC with USB into a DMX signal. Now if you're setting these up on your display, the Falcon, the Pix Lite, and I don't know about others, have a DMX output on their boards. So you send it to your Falcon or your Pix Lite, then you take the DMX DMX out and you give it to your lights. And you've got to configure all that, which we won't, we won't go into. Um, this particular device under X lights uh, likes to be universe one. I can't get it to be anything else, so it wants to be universe one. And I've set it up. Have a look here. I've just set up one output. DMX, it's on COM port 5, which we had to go and find out which COM port the driver was on on device manager, and I've got 512 channels. The way that the moving heads work and any sort of multi-parameter device is they have a channel for each attribute. So you'll get one channel for the pan, one channel for tilt, one channel for red, one for blue, one for green. Um, if it's got gobos in it, which are slides or patterns if you want to think about it like that you'll have one channel which will be gobo selection and then the value of DMX between 0 and 255 will determine which gobo gets selected so for example 0 to 10 might be open 11 to 20 could be the Batman signal 21 to 30 could be a cross or something else like that and when you buy these you will get a book of words and it looks like this, and it looks like that, and there's not a lot in there. These little units are designed for garages and bedrooms of kids and little small applications. They will stand alone. So if you plug them in and turn them on, they dance and they flash their lights and they carry on. And if you've got a bit of music going, they'll dance to the music. If you buy more than one, you can daisy chain them up. One of them takes charge as the master, and the rest of them follow along. They all dance the same pattern. And some of the patterns are quite complicated, and they chase and do what have you. Not bad for $70. What we're interested in is the DMX use for them. So coming out of our um, DMX dongle, this being a professional device, has five pin DMX on it, which is what you'll find in all your upmarket proper DMX. Out in the in entertainment industry they use 5 pin but they also use 3 pin and they use 3 pin because it's the same XLR connector. If I find one I've got here. It's the same 3 pin XLR connector that they use for microphone leads and other such things. So we can pinch a microphone lead and make a DMX lead out of it. So a lot of the what would you call them, more popular models have three pin DMX on them. Uh, if you buy these you'll have to get some DMX leads. That's a three pin um, XLR connector. $1.50 from eBay or somewhere up to $20 from the local AV shop. Depends how much you want to pay. And I actually think that when Heath bought his he's, he got one in the packet as well. But you need these connectors that's shielded cable that's professional quality because I had access to it, but you requ um, usually require shielded cable to get a decent run. 
I've been told you can use Cat5 cable. I've never done it. I don't know how you'd wire it up or which cords you'd use. It'd be out there on the internet somewhere. So if you wanted to do it. And of course, if you've got a Falcon board, it's got an RG45 connector that plugs into the, the output on it. So that's our DMX cable. So I've come out here. The little black lead I've got is just a 5-pin to 3-pin converter. Going into my first light, daisy chain to the second light. One thing about DMX is it likes to be terminated, which means it likes to have a 120 ohm resistor at the end of the chain. Now some devices have the 120 ohm resistor built in and you just throw a little switch on the back and it terminates it. Other, other times you make up a terminator, which is just a, D, a XLR plug with a 120 ohm resistor in it and that goes in the last block. Now you don't necessarily need them. If you've got three, if your Christmas decorations they work wonderful. If you're doing a stage show for your local school and you bring your lights in and put them up on stage, they'll stop working or they'll do what they want. So we use them as a matter of precaution. You don't, nece don't necessarily need them. It just cleans up the data signal so they behave more reliably. Anyway, so back to our how to throw them in. I've set up my output in X lights. I've gone into the layout and I've put the DMX model in. That's for the moving head spot. I'll bring in the second model. Now that's looking at it from the top. Under the style over here I have moving head 3D which is what I like. You need to give it a name. Call this one Flood. This bloke up here. Call him Spot. So the next thing, we're looking at the spot now, Come here. it says number of channels. So we said earlier that they use different channels for pan tilt, colours and what have you. This particular spotlight, according to the Book of Words, can have an 11 channel mode or an 8 channel mode. The 11 channel mode uses 16 bits for the movement of the heads, which gives them a greater um, accuracy in their movement. Because you think about it, 8 bits is 255 different divisions and so you've got 360 degrees, well, in fact these rotate 540 degrees. So 540 degrees divided by 255 different divisions gives you 2 degrees thereabouts. So each DMX value is a 2 degree step in the rotation. Which is if you're doing professional work, stage work, 2 degrees could be the difference between the bass player and the drummer. And if you're trying to point out where you're going, you need a greater step. So they go into 16-bit mode, which gives them the greater accuracy. So in this one here, we're going to use 8-channel mode, which we've got selected up there as 8 channels. Now the rest of it here, it says, it asks, what is the pan channel? And on this particular device, it's channel 1. What's the tilt channel? It's channel 2. Um, what else have we got? What's the red channel? We don't have red channels on this one. Nope. Channel 6 is the dimmer. Uh, we'll call that shutter, shall we? Now they're all different. They all have different names. This one calls them X and Y, not pan and tilt. And importantly, it's set the D down here, it's set the DMX channel 1. And on the unit itself, I've programmed it to be DMX1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of the spotlight. And I've set up the floodlight to be DMX channel 10. So we go into... That didn't stick. Yeah, I get caught all the time. Now the floodlight's a different beast. He has a 9 channel mode and a 14 channel mode. Some of the big professional lights run over 30 channels with all the different features that they have. So he has a 9 channel mode. Um, pan is 1. Tilt is 2. Now this bike has RGB. So where are we? Red is, red is 4, 
Green is five. Blue is six. It's also got a white LED in them as well, which is channel seven. But in this setup, it's not available. The shutter was uh, different. We'll come back to it. So anyway, I've set them up. This is all rough. Yeah, where are we? Just save it before it dies on me again. Where are we? No names. Oh, the strand or the node? No. Node. So we said for this one that channel one was pan. Two was tilt. Yeah. This is making life easy for you to program. We don't need to do it to make them work. So they're there. I don't want to waste time playing with them. So now we've done that. Go into the sequencer. I've set up a, a real rough little sequence here at the moment. Should put another. So up here, we grab the DMX effect and then we're putting it on the spotlight. Where are we? You're right about the real estate. So I've got the floodlight and the spotlight, and I'll put a DMX effect on both of them. Okay, let's play with the flood first, see what happens. So over here, in the effects setting, it tells me that I've got channels 1 to 9, and there's our pan and tilt that we typed in earlier. Whereas the rest of them, it just says channel 3, channel 4, and so on. I've turned on the output, so they should be outputting. So if I move the pan value, it should move the machine, and we're not playing. Tilt. You just said stop, Didn't I? You, wouldn't you tell me when I was over in that screen? Because you said you wanted to move on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm last, don't I? Uh, number of channels. Den, 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 den. I can't. Uh, start channel. Sorry, the this reflection on the screen and glasses and... So there's the pan, as I move the pan, you can see that it moves around. As I move the tilt, the light will tilt. And uh, the little picture at the front mimics it. There's a whole lot of settings that we didn't set in the setup that has to do with how it's presented on the layout, so when you're programming. It's not needed to make it go. Now this particular little nut beastie, it has the master control on channel 3. Between 0 and 8, it's off. Between 8 and 135, it dims. Between 136 and 240, it strobes. And if I've got it above 241, it should be on. So it's above 241 for channel 3. So it should be on. So now if I pick up the red, I should get some red. And if I pick up the green, some green and of course that one's blue and the other channel was white that we didn't didn't have it so effectively you put the, the effect in the in the timeline for the flood you come over here and you say at this point of time in my song I want the, the moving head pointing that way I want the tilt doing that I want it to be red, which was what colour? Red was four. 
So you, that's when you should type them in. So I want it red. And then for the next part of the song, I will move the pan somewhere else. I've got to be careful I don't point it in people's eyes. We've got in trouble in Sydney for doing that. <laughs> and is that blue? I can't see. Green? Right, so now if, you have, if we play our... It's a bit slow, isn't it, Shane? So once it hits the timing mark, you should move to the next position. If it's stuck, and it didn't. It did? Yep. And that's, that's how you can program it. So it's a matter of just going through and working out where you want to point it, what effect you want it to do, and so on. Um, some tips for them. It takes a finite amount of time to get from A to B. So you can't point it there and point it there and point it back in your song very rapidly because it's going to take a second for it to move. If you want it to move really fast, get your wallet out. <laughs> and you can buy ones that move really fast. I can see some uses in them. Under a tree, perhaps shining up into a tree and then out along the yard and then sweeping the yard. On your balconies, looking down, something like that perhaps. Up, washing up the side of your house. So you could wash up the house and then you could move them and wash across the yard. Perhaps. Um, another thing with them as well, we're going from one set of parameters to another. So we're changing colours, we're changing pan, we're changing tilt, and it all happens at once. What you might like is for the light to be on over here in red, and then for it to turn off, and then for it to be on over here in green, rather than going from red to green as it's sweeping across. So when it comes to programming them, you can turn them off, then reposition them, then turn the colour on. Um, I believe, see how lucky I can be. Can we add, add, a, add a layer to the flood, go to the flood level and add a layer. Yeah. Uh, get rid of the colour in your flood DMX, so turn your red off. Which is three, wasn't that? It was four. Yeah. And now drop a colour wash on. And on? Uh, colour wash. Yeah, that one. See what it does? May not know how to handle the wash. No, it's not working. Yeah. No, I didn't. Well, didn't. Oh, maybe. Oh, I know where it is. Um, Should be solid red. Swap them around. Put another layer in. Of the flood. Yeah. Uh, move oh, the DMX down and move the color up. So click on it, down arrow. Once. And yeah, we're going to push that. Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, select it properly. Okay, you can select it. Okay, that one more. Get the, middle, get, it? get the middle where the hand is. That's it. Ah. And press up. That's it. Oh, yeah. okay. That's right. So now it'll obey the colour wash. Changing colours? There you go. So yeah, so you don't have to manually set the colours. Um, it'll obey the on effect and the colour wash, I think, directly. The other thing is you can put value curves on these things as well. Yes. And I believe you can also do state effects. So you can set up state effects like Keith did earlier and you can put a timing track and you could call it wall and she'll do the wall and roof and she'll point to the roof if you set it up like that. We could spend hours playing with it, which I don't want to do. I just want to show you what they can do. So the other thing I'll say about the DMX effect is you must keep the DMX effect with an effect on it. Because as soon as you leave a gap, it emits emit zero, so it'll go back to its zero position. So if you click off those effects, just click off the effect somewhere. They go back. I'll just see if I can separate that. Yeah. So it, happens. I guess the end of the effect. Right, it goes home. 
position. Now she'll, and you'll see yeah, how it's... Make sure you fill in the whole timeline, mm. otherwise they go back to zero. You might want them to. So let's have a look at the spotlight. I've not used the spotlight, this is new. This is Heath's. <laughs> I'm just trying to find his book of words. Right, so according to this, one and two is X and Y. So that's working. And that one's working. I think it's because of how X lights is putting out changing values. Because it only jitters when I'm when I'm driving it. I don't know. No? I don't know. I, I don't know at all what's causing that. Um, let's see if I can work out how to turn it on. The light bulb is channel six. According to my words, so I should be able to turn it on. Oh, it's a wheel as well. Okay, so I have a color wheel on channel six. What's Channel 4 going to do for us? There you go. There's some... Can I put it... We're going to point it somewhere so we can have a look at something. Yeah, they're cool. When you get smart and you work out how to drive them, they're even cooler. <laughs> I got a little focusing ring on these cheapies in the front. If you buy a good one, you can you can focus them remotely via DMX. You can. What it's got in it is a white LED and a disc with eight colours in it. And by working out how to read the um, controls. Colour wheel is on channel 3 according to this. So if I go back to 3, it's white. We need some up arrows, Keith. Now I've got, I've got red, at some 9's red. And that's an orangey colour. That's a yellow colour at 36. Yeah. Green's at 47. Yeah. Right. That's not listed here. You've, you've got to sit down and work out what the values are. And it's all on one channel. And some of these devices, they get a channel and they put lots of things on the one channel and you get strobing and shaking and strobing and shaking and shaking and strobing and rotating all different values on the same channel. So the state effect will work really well. Once you work out what that value is, you can come in here and you can say, I really want that to be 150, which is a, a blue-green split. All it's done is just put the wheel in a, in a location that splits. You can't get DMX colours, you can't get RGB, you can't get all those colours, you get the colours that are with it. And I dare say if you buy different ones at different times from different manufacturers, what you get is what you get. Um, the shape is what's called a gobo and that's on channel 4. What it has is like a little steel slide in it. So usually it's open. It's a disc with patterns cut in it. Let's find a different colour. There you go. No. There's another one. There's another one. And there's another one. As we just go up through the, the values. Oh, it shakes. There you go. Just go. Yes. Whatever you're doing. Um, some of them are smart, and I'll turn their own light off. Um, some of it's programmable. It's just a matter of what you've got and what model you buy from what manufacturer to what options you get. You'll see how they've got, they're shaking each of the different ones. And then we'll do a rotation. 
and then we'll get a fast rotation, then we'll get a counterclockwise rotation and all these sort of different options that's whatever's in the device as you program it. So you can't physically control that image, it's, they're pre-designed in the unit? Right? They're pre-designed in the unit, they're just a, it's a steel plate yep. that's been laser cut. Yep. Yeah, they're only about the size of 10 cent coin, the actual slide, only little slides. If you buy a better one, you can actually replace them and put different slides in and they're about $50 each to buy. Um, and some models allow you to actually rotate the pattern. So you can rotate the, the image. So next time you're watching some show on TV and they've got a, people on stage and they see these patterns rotating, that's all they are. They look really good if you've got haze or smoke and you have the fingers of light coming out of the light and they're, they're rotating. So you get these rotating fingers of light. Not necessarily what patterns are there, but just the effect of the fingers that that pattern causes. They often point them down on the stage. The audience can't see the pattern, but they see the rotation. But you need smoke, and you need a light that's got a bit of horsepower. I mean, that'll str that'd struggle outside or if you had serious stage lighting or something else. But you, the, the, yeah, how you set them up and what you want to do with them and uh, it's all up to your imagination. But it's as easy as just putting them in the into X lights over here, setting an effect on them, setting a values for your different sliders, and away you go. Now, the last bit of magic I want to show you is I've had a bit of drama. Stop it. I've just pulled his DMX dongle out, so he'll probably go into dance mode in a moment. I have these wireless DMXs that I use. That's a receiving unit, and it works on with a little power supply. And I have a transmitting unit that I put into a cable so that you can see it. So that's a transmitter. It works at 2.4 gig, one of the free bands. I've got four receivers, about $120 eBay. -ish. They don't need to run cable up to it. If you wanted to put that light and put it on the roof, you plug the receiver into it, what needs is a power point. The way it goes. So maybe in your yard, you might have some of these mounted on a board perhaps. You plug a receiver. Once you plug the receiver in, you can then cable out to the others. So it just acts as a bit of wireless wire between point A and point B. Take it out, put it in the yard, plug it into 240, the way it goes. Having said that, my wash wouldn't talk to the transmitter. So I've had to put the transmitter into the box. And last week I had a different sort of, um, last week back in Newcastle I had a different sort of moving head and it didn't want to be the first one in the chain. <laughs> you're paying $70. You're going gonna, you're gonna to get that sort of drama with them. So you've got to be prepared that you might have to do something funny, you might have to make some cables, they may not be. If you're paying 20 grand for them or even $2,000 for them to put on your stage, you'd expect them to work and they do work. So for seventy dollars, or was one hundred and thirty dollars for two delivered? It's just cheap chips. Don't know how long they last. They're not waterproof. That's the other problem with them. They've got little fans in them to keep them cold. And as you know, fans will suck water in. People are trying to work out how to make a a perspex dome to go over them, keep the water off them, and things like that. Depends where you put them. What you want to do with them. <laughs> 